Um, uh, hello, VCC. How are you doing this morning? Good. Doing well? Doing well? All right, all right. Can we give it up for those online joining us near and far, wherever they are? Um, I'm honored. Honored to have you guys here in the house. Uh, we're honored to launch uh, a new series entitled Supernatural. Supernatural, where we're, we get to introduce what it means to, to be naturally supernatural disciples of Jesus. So for the next four weeks, uh, we want in, to invite you to journey with us, really, to journey with us as we explore the why and the how of naturally supernatural living. The why and the how of this naturally supernatural life and we, in ways we can press into our everyday today. Uh, and some of us here are probably thinking, uh, oh my goodness, what, is, what does it even mean to be naturally supernatural? What is going on with this weird mystical stuff right now? Well, let me go ahead and define it to maybe add some context to the term, okay? So naturally supernatural is a vineyard distinctive, all right? Simply put, it's a vineyard distinctive that means being available for God to add his supernatural to our natural. Being available for God to add his supernatural to our natural. To be you, to be intentional, to be open and be available for God to partner with you. Just be you. Just be who it is you are. You don't have to be anybody else. You don't have to be like me, like Matt, Raul, anybody here at the church. Just be who God made you to be and allow God to work both in and through you. That's what Naturally Supernatural is really all about. We don't want to make it something it's not. We, want, we don't even want to take it to weird places, you know what I'm saying? And, and, to be, and to be real with you, our faith can sometimes go to some weird places if we think about it. You know, if we think about it long enough, we pray to a God that's invisible. That's kind of weird to the eyes of the world. Or we tithe to God who we can't see. Or we raise our hands in worship. Or some of us got that holy sway. You know what I'm saying? Some of us are there. You know what I mean? Some of, some of us are maybe here. <laughs> That's okay. But, but bottom line is that, you know, worship can be weird in the eyes of the world. And be honest, And to be honest with you, the world already knows that I'm already weird, okay? So I don't need to add more weird to my weird going on. You know what I mean? I don't need to add more weird to it. So, uh, but I do want to be about serving the king and his kingdom. I do want to be about serving the king and his kingdom. So today, to be fair, I want to help demystify some of these things of the spirit in hopes for us to grow more comfortable with the uncomfortable. In hopes for us to grow more comfortable with the uncomfortable, but in a natural way. Because here at the Vineyard, we want to lean into something important. We want to lean into this thing called the radical middle. We want to be naturally supernatural. We want to go into the radical middle. Think about it. When Jesus taught his disciples all throughout Scripture, he was teaching his disciples how to be about the supernatural, but in a natural way. Y'all, if we have all word and no spirit, we will dry up. If we have all spirit and no word, we will blow up. But when we have word and spirit working in hand, hand in hand, we will grow up. We want the word and we want the spirit. We want to live naturally, supernatural. So if you're excited about this series uh, or, you know, you're neutral or you, you probably are saying, I'm not really feeling this, I pray that this series provoke us to think differently about the power, about the authority, about the commission, the mandate that Jesus gave everyone here to live out today. Every, everyone's been given the power, the authority, and mandate, y'all, because we believe that Jesus is inviting us to grow more in this idea of being naturally supernatural disciples of him. So let's pray, and we'll get it in. Look to your neighbor and say, let's go if you're ready. Let's go. Okay, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we, we thank you for just the opportunity to gather here. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing. And we pray, Father, that you, you speak. Open eyes, open ears, and speak your words that people here need to hear today. May you come. 
Holy Spirit, will you come in this place and stir up mightily, mightily, Lord, so that we encounter you. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. 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 On June 6th, 1944, something went down that would forever change the course of history. It was World War II, and something had to be done about Hitler and his goons. They were going after world domination. They were, they were actually, they were, you know, taking a lot of territory. It was not looking good. But on June 6th, 1944, a day remembered as, and for, will be forever remembered as D-Day a.k.a. Operation Overlord, where American and British and Canadian forces, they basically rallied together. They rallied the troops together, and they strategically came up with a plan to storm the beaches of Normandy, France. It was a hotbed of just enemy activity. And so these guys, man, got in these U-boats, and they were like, y'all, we, we, we will probably lose our lives, but we're going to do so for the sake of a free world. So we're going in. And when they went in, they took, they were on an, an intense enemy fire. I mean, they had to get out these boats, march on the beach. I mean, people are, you, you've seen the movies. I mean, people are dying. This bloodshed out there. I mean, it was intense, but successful nonetheless. Ha, nonetheless, you get <laughs> successful nonetheless, though. He, you know, the, 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 uh, the troops stormed the beaches. They secured a foothold. And after they secured the foothold, they basically saw liberation for the entire coast of France. And from there, they eventually won the war. Historians say that on D-Day, as soon as Operation Overlord took into effect and was successful, when that foothold was actually secured, that was the day in time and hour the war was actually already won. That was the time when the war was actually won. After that, everything else would fall into place. But sure, yes, the enemy was still out there popping shots. The enemy was still out there shooting at the good guys. I mean, they still had to fight. People still lost their lives, but historians say that D-Day, when they secured that foothold on that beach, that was the operation that pretty much was the beginning of the end for the enemy. See, the enemy was defeated, but not yet departed. Why am I giving you this history lesson? Because the same thing happened about 2,000 plus years ago. Um, when Jesus came to earth and lived the life that no one could live and died the death that no one can die and raised again from the grave, this marked the beginning of the end for the enemy here on earth. That was the D-Day. There was a D-Day back 2,000 plus years ago, a.k.a. Operation Overlord 2,000 plus years ago. The enemy, because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, the enemy's been defeated. Death cannot hold him down. Death cannot hold us down. And he is vanquished, and the battle has already been won. But check this out. Then This is good news. This is why we gather. This is why we celebrate. This is why we are about Jesus, because this is the good news that saves but it's important to realize that we still have an enemy out there that's still popping shots at us. Think about it. There's all the sin in this world. We got people sinning. We, we, have, we have sickness. We have pain. We have suffering. We have, we have things going on in this world, church. Listen, the enemy is defeated, yes, but not yet departed. The enemy's been defeated, but not yet Departed. So we live in this age of the already and not yet. The kingdom has been inaugurated by Jesus the Christ already. But the kingdom is not fully here yet. We still have sin. We still have things we have to contend with. But the kingdom is here, but not yet fully here. We live in this tension which is why we have two kingdoms at war. In John 10.10, 10, I'm going to go there. You can turn there, click there, or follow along on 
the screen. John 10, 10 reads this. He makes it clear when he says, the thief, the enemy, comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I, Jesus, I came that they, humanity, you and me, they may have life and have it abundantly. We're in this already and not yet tension of the kingdom of God. Ever wonder what in the world is going on in the world today with people? I mean, look around. You got COVID drama, you got racial tension drama, you got, you know, political tension drama. I mean, people are even driving angrier these days, seems, right? I mean, my goodness. And, and then you got, the, you got, you know, people who have the nerve to root for the Steelers. I mean, what's going on? I mean, I, it's all kinds of craziness. Uh, unfortunately, though, the enemy is still busy doing what he does best. Stealing, stealers. I mean, you know, I'm in, I'm in. Stealing, killing, and destroying. In, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it reads this, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. No wonder why we see so many people playing themselves out there, y'all. We got the blind leading the blind out there. Think about it. Don't you notice the hypocrisy in the world? Don't you notice everything going down in, in the world? It's just like, wow, well, that's kind of hypocritical. That don't make sense. Oh, that does, doesn't land well. Because we got the blind leading the blind out there. It says it here. The God of this world, that's the enemy, the prince of the power of the air, devil, Satan himself. He is blinding the minds of unbelievers. And it also says in 1 Peter 5, 8, that the enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking for someone to devour. Church, the enemy's alive and active out there. The enemy, the, the, the kingdom of darkness is trying to do whatever it can to take territory. But the kingdom of God is also alive and active too. The kingdom of God is also alive and active too in you, in us, in the church. There are two kingdoms, church, still at war. The enemy's been defeated, yes, but not yet departed. And when we understand this kingdom theology, it changes the game. When we understand this kingdom theology, it will crystallize the why we should even care about getting involved with this naturally supernatural stuff. That's naturally supernatural life. It's the main and plain of why we even advance the kingdom of God. It's through the power of Christ. So we've got to understand the why. Let's talk more about the why. Let's go back to Jesus and talk a little bit about what he's commissioned and empowered us to actually do. We have Jesus, okay, who, who, who's invaded the earth. He came and stormed, you know, the beaches of earth. He pretty much stormed, you know, and, and invaded earth. And he had this original D-Day, the original Operation Overlord. And bam, what did he do? He started to equipping the state. He started to basically uh, equip his team on how to redeem and restore humanity. He came to redeem and restore. Someone say redeem and restore. He came to redeem and restore humanity, and he wanted to teach his team to do the same thing. Mark 1.15, it reads this, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Okay, let's break this down for a sec. The time is fulfilled. What does that mean? Well, in the Greek, it's Kairos, Kairos in the Greek. Yeah, I went Beth Guckenberger on you. <laughs> I'm going in with the Greek on them. But Kairos, it means, well, you, you most likely hear it, Kairos. And you probably hear it as Kairos moment. Let's talk about what a Kairos moment is. Kairos moment is basically God breaking into time. God who stands outside of time broke into time and did, did a God thing, just did a divine, unbelievable, oh my gosh, what is going on thing. Jesus, he brought his son, Jesus. He's the ultimate Kairos moment. And he came in, broke into time, invaded time, and it says the time is fulfilled, and 
You cannot skip over this. The kingdom of God is at hand, meaning the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is near. I am Jesus the Christ, and with me, I brought the kingdom of God, baby, with me. And the kingdom of God is now here. I am inaugurating the kingdom. And what's the kingdom? It's the presence of God. It's the presence of God. It's the rule and reign of God. And he's saying that the kingdom of God is at hand, meaning it's near, it's here. It's also in the future. So when we step out to advancing the kingdom, we're, all, we're, we're really bringing what's in the future here into the present now. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's here, it's near, it's in our midst and how do we step into the kingdom? How do, we, how do we get into the kingdom of God? It says here, by repenting and believing in the good news of Jesus. Y'all, it was documented in the Gospels and in Acts over 80 times where Jesus mentions and preaches kingdom. The kingdom of God was a big deal to Jesus because he he brought the kingdom. He's ushering the kingdom. So he gave people opportunities not only to enter the kingdom of God, but to experience the kingdom of God. And, that, and what happens when the kingdom of God shows up? There's healing. There's deliverance. There's abundant life. There's signs, wonders, miracles. Why? Because the kingdom of God is the presence of God, y'all. It's his rule and reign of God. So in Luke 11... Uh, he's arguing with the Pharisees, and, you know, the Pharisees are mad because he's, you know, casting out demons, and they want to, you know, they're basically saying, Jesus, you're casting out demons with demons. And Jesus is like, silly guys. I mean, you know, no, I'm not casting out demons with demons, but a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand, you know? And, and I'm not gonna go into that, but I believe that that's a good word for today. But, you know, a kingdom divided itself cannot stand. He basically says, you know what? If, it's, if I deliver someone, it's from the kingdom of God. So he says this in, in Luke eleven twenty. but if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Another time when Jesus was training his team, he was going out, was doing the stuff. In Luke 10, 9, it reads that he told his team, hey, and heal those who are sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Church, when we experience healing, signs, miracles, wonders, when we experience liberation, when we experience abundant life, in and of itself, we are experiencing the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's near. It's here. And, ah, there's the tension. It's not fully here. See, the kingdom of God is at hand, but yet it's not fully here. There's the tension. We're living in this period of the already and not yet. The why, this is the why, though, Jesus put so much emphasis on training his team, who would later become the church, who now, 2021, the church today, we are empowered to do the stuff that Jesus did, y'all, to advance the kingdom of God. We're commissioned and empowered to do what Jesus did and storm the gates of hell, we're commissioned and empowered to do what Jesus did and to destroy the works of the enemy. We are not called to be a Christian just to sit on our blessed assurances, y'all. <laughs> blessed assurance. You know, we, we're not called to just sit on our blessed assurance. And we're called to be about a king and his kingdom to advance what he's called us to advance. But to do it in a naturally supernatural way. That's what we're called to do. We didn't become a Christian to make it about us. We didn't become a Christian to, to live comfortably comfortable, right? We became a Christian to die to ourselves so that we can live for him. We became a Christian not for us but for the sake of the world. Listen, this is our why. We are called to be naturally supernatural people, stewards 
Why? To advance the kingdom of God. And when we advance the kingdom of God, we are dethroning the enemy everywhere we go because we are making it known that God alone is on the throne. We are dethroning the enemy everywhere we go because we are making it known that God alone is on the throne. That's our why. This is why we advance the kingdom. Now, who wants to sign up for that? Who wants to sign up for that? I want to sign up for that. I pray you do too. I pray you too. So we're going to keep it going because I want to talk a little bit about the how. How do we do the stuff? And before I step into the how, I want to just say there's... I. You know, we're going to be hopefully um, stepping into more opportunities where we'll be equipping you, like providing classes or providing other spaces where we'll be talking more about this natural, natural, supernatural life and how we can go in, lean in, and do the stuff that Jesus did. We're not going to be able to get this in one fell swoop, but there are three hows that I want to leave you with that can hopefully start things, that, that can hopefully be a, I don't know, a primer to this lifestyle. And the first how is this. You, we must be empowered, filled by Holy Spirit. Empowered and filled and empowered by Holy Spirit. In, um, in Acts 1, 4 and 8, <clears throat> Jesus, he, uh, he basically talks to his team and tells them how critical it is um, to be filled by Holy Spirit. He says, hey, guys, I'm about to go, but it's imperative you stay in Jerusalem. Stay in Jerusalem because you need the gift. (laughs) You need what Holy Spirit can give to you so that you can be an effective witness for me. And here's what he says. He says, "He, he ordered them, he, Jesus, ordered them, disciples, not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. In verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Listen, they needed to be filled with Holy Spirit, filled and empowered by Holy Spirit in order to be effective witnesses. Living this Christian life Y'all, we need to be filled and empowered by Holy Spirit. I, I believe that it is, you know, it's impossible to live this Christian life without the help of Holy Spirit. Living, living a life of, living, living this Christian life is not only lame, but a little tame when we don't have Holy Spirit's intervention. So we must be filled in order to be effective witnesses. We must be filled in order to effectively Preach the gospel with power and to effectively show people who Jesus is and what Jesus is like. We need Holy Spirit, y'all. God longs to add his super to our natural. He longs to add his ability to our availability. He he wants us to, to be so filled with him that you are an effective Witness, he told that to his team, and I believe that he's saying that to us here today. And guess what? The fun thing is, is that everybody gets to play. I believe there's some people here who don't feel like they even count or they can be an effective witness. No, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Let that lie go. Let that lie go. You can be effectively used and partnered by Holy Spirit to see more of his glory. End of story. Bottom line. You can do this. So we must be filled, though, and empowered. It's not us doing it. It's Holy Spirit in us. The second how I want to talk about is be yourself. One, be filled and empowered by Holy Spirit. Two, be yourself. Many of us feel pressured to try to perform or, or be someone that we're not. And, you know, I want to be like this guy, that guy, or I'm not doing it right if I'm not like this. No, no, no. Be yourself. It's just save, save yourself the, the, the struggle and just step into being who it is you have been called to be. You know, uh, and, and when we do that, we can just be naturally us. 
And in fact, you know, like when I'm around people and they're praying and, and they like change up the way they pray, in the name of Jesus, no, 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 listen, listen, all you gotta do is just be yourself. And just be you. Just pray like you normally would pray. And just be natural about it. Or if you're praying for healing, all of a sudden you have to like raise up the volume or something. No, no, no. Just be yourself. Just pray and allow God's supernatural to work in and through your natural. Allow God to work through you. So be yourself. The third how is this. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. We gotta be willing, we gotta be willing to take risks for the kingdom. In other words, we've gotta be willing to play a fool or look a fool for Jesus and be okay with that. But if I'm being honest with you, I sometimes can struggle with being a fool for Jesus. I know you're like, oh, what? what are you talking about? Yeah, sometimes I can struggle with playing a fool. For, I know I'm weird enough already, you know what I'm saying? I know I'm crazy enough already. But there are days where I'm like, man, I really don't want to go do that right now, Lord. Because this is going to look, I'm going to look foolish. Why? Why do I struggle with that? Because to be honest with you, I kind of care what a lot of y'all think about me. I kind of care a little too much about what the world thinks about me sometimes. I need to sometimes just, you know what, no, 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 no. It's not, about, it's not about the way I look. It's about God getting glory through my story, God getting glory through my life. And when that happens, I'm dangerous for the kingdom of God. I'm dangerous to the kingdom of, of, of darkness, and I'm shining my light even more so, and I'm being used by God in such a way that is uh, earthly incredible. But there are days where I have to struggle you know, and I don't want to press in. And when that happens, I have to force myself out of my comfort zone. I have to force myself out of my little comfort box. I remember being in a, um, in a, at a gas station. And uh, I was just like the other day, I was at a gas station around my neighborhood. And pumping gas. And this lady next um, on, on the pump over, uh, she was just obviously and noticeably having a, a hard time. Things were just not going well for her. And so I look over and say, excuse me, ma'am. It looks like you're going through a hard time. Um, can I pray for you right now? And she looked at me with tears in her eyes. She started to well up. She's like, you would do that for me? I'm like, yeah, I would love prayer for you, from you. And so I, you know, cross over and, you know, I'm, I'll ask her what her name is. We're, we're praying eventually. And, and as we're praying, I felt like I had a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is uh, a fact about someone I should not have naturally known, but the Lord supernaturally deposited to me. Um, and so I, I had a word of knowledge that she had right knee pain. And I'm, I'm, I stopped the prayer and say, excuse me, ma'am, do you by chance have right knee pain? And she's like, yeah, how did you know? I said, I feel like the Lord wants to heal your knee just to show to you that not only is he here, but that he is intimately involved with even the finest detail of your life. And I believe that he's going to heal you right now. <laughs> She's like, what? And so we prayed. And after I prayed, I said, hey, check your knee. And she checked her knee. She's walking all around. She's like, the pain is gone. She's crying like the pain is gone. Oh, my goodness. What's your name? I'm like, I'm, I'm Clay. What church you go to, Clay? I want to come to your church. I'm like, yo, you know, like, let's, let's, let's just keep praying about, like, you know, what God is doing. Because I believe that God wants to continue to just fill you up with his presence. And her sister, who was walking around the car by now, like, just looking and, and just observing what was happening, she starts crying too. And she was like, oh, my gosh, can you pray for me next? And I'm like, yeah, I can pray for you next, sis. Uh, and, and it's crazy. Like the point I'm trying to make is that the kingdom of God was advancing at the gas station. The kingdom of God is advancing in the gas station. Why? Because the kingdom of God advances everywhere we go if we allow it to. We've got to partner with the Lord. We've got to be available for the Lord to add his supernatural to our natural so that we can be willing, be open, be ready for him to advance the kingdom of God through us. 
is not about us, y'all. At the end of the day, it's good that we're saved. It's good that we have restored relationship. Everything vertically, everything in my life, it's, it's amazing what he has done and how he's changed me. And that's all well and good. But now it's come to the point that as a baby Christian, it was all about me. But as a maturing Christian, son of God, it's about the sake of the world. And I've got to be about extending what he did to me, to others. And so... That's what it's about to be naturally supernatural. It's just to be you, but be open, be available for God to use you to speak through you. That's our why. We advance the kingdom agenda that was mandated from the beginning. We have a part to restore and redeem humanity, y'all. We can partner with that. And that, 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 that whole gas station story, it all started with a simple phrase, simple vineyard phrase, can I pray for you right now? So as we step into this Naturally Supernatural uh, series these next three weeks, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to talk about how we can be leaning into this Naturally Supernatural life and how we can in, in, incorporate some practical tools to be about this every day of our life. But remember the how. Start with the how. Start with the beginning, the primer of this thing. Is, is ask Holy Spirit, fill me up. Will you empower me with you, with your person? Will you empower me, Holy Spirit? Fill me up afresh to be yourself. You don't have to be anybody else that we're not. Just be you, natural. Be you, your character, your personality, but allow Holy Spirit to, to filter and, or be, allow Holy Spirit to, to work through all of that. And then faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Take risk for the kingdom. And it can start with this simple action step that I'm going to leave you with, this, this, this can I pray for you right now challenge. Find somebody. When the opportunity is right. Find somebody when you get, when you're prompted, when you're stirred up. Find somebody to ask that question to. Hey, can I pray for you right now? And see how Holy Spirit moves in that moment. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for how you're, uh, you're percolating. How you're stirring what you're doing, Lord. I, I, I say yes and amen. We say yes and amen to the more of what you want to invite us to. Although this may be a little scary or maybe even uncomfortable, Father, I pray that if you're the one calling us, you're going to be the one to, to bring the, the fire, to bring the empowerment, to bring the, the, the how and, and all that. You're going to work this out. All we have to do is just be available and ready to go, Lord. So I pray that in, in every way, Lord, that your sons and daughters can be about that open life, that naturally supernatural life as they lean in to the more of you in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. 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 Why don't y'all stand up? We're about to worship. And after we worship here, I'm going to come back up and we're going to do more ministry.
powerful name it is. You have no rival. You have no equal. Yeah. Like that, that, those are fighting words right there. You have no rival. There's nothing that can compare to you. There's even the God of this world is out there blinding the minds of unbelievers. You are stronger than that. And he is using his church to show and prove that. Church, we need to be activated in this thing. We need to be activated in this thing. It's dependent on us to continually advance his cause, advance his agenda. I was, uh, I just had a, a salesman at our house just yesterday uh, for a paint job. And he came in and he was just struck by the Lord. And, and we had a conversation that awarded me to pray for him to be filled up with the Spirit. And he was like, Clay, like, I don't know what's going on, but you're not like other Christians. The Christians I know don't, like, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. But you walk the walk. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry that you, 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 you know, you, you experience that with other Christians. That's not, I hope that, you know, we can, you know, you can start, like, seeing more of a, of a talking the talk and walking the walk. But, hey, let me pray for you. I want to pray for you because I felt the Lord said, hey, fill him up with the Spirit. Fill him up with the Spirit. And he wanted more of him. And, and he had a hunger for more, to walk even more in power. And he wanted to shine his light. And I felt like the Lord is inviting some of us right now to be filled up by his presence. So if you are wanting to be filled up afresh even more, you want to return to this idea of, of man, I want to burn for my first love. I want to be on fire for him so that I can be an effective witness. Yeah. I want you to come up right now.
just come up real quick. We, we, you know, we're on a, I want to just pray over you right now. And just Holy Spirit to fill your people afresh. We don't want to be about just like living this skeleton of a gospel. We want the real deal. We want it all, Lord. So will you fall on us, Lord, afresh? Scoot on up. Come on up, KJ. Come on up. Come on. Come on up. Everybody, come up. Close. More, Lord. More, Lord. I fill up your people. Fill your people afresh. We want to represent you well, Lord. May you fill us up afresh. As the, the, the band sings this next course, we're just going to allow Holy Spirit to minister to his people and fill you up. So fill them up, Lord. Those on the balcony, if you're not able to come down, just right where you are. If you don't want to come down right where you are, just allow Holy Spirit to come in. Just posture your hearts to receive. Because it isn't about us. It's about God flowing through us, and we want Him to overflow. So, Lord, overflow. Do it. Overflow in your people. Come on. Because I'm not enough unless you come. Lord, will you meet me here again? Because all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? We're not enough, Lord. Because I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me? You're all I ever wanted for. Is all I want. Is all you want to just say we believe. We, we want to show the world that we believe. We want to be about a show and tell gospel. We want to be about a not only a proclamation, but a demonstration gospel. We don't want to be a, about a natural, but we also want to be about a supernatural gospel, Lord. So will you meet us here? We, we know the answer to that question. The question is, will you meet him here? Will you Will you allow him to fill us up? Fill you up. He wants to. He, he take, draw near to God and <laughs> he's going to draw near to you. So I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. And I, and I know that we need to conclude. So here's what I feel like the Lord is, is saying. I want to pray out. There's somebody here who, who needs to, um, you, you're hearing kingdom language for the first time or you're hearing this language of repenting and believing the gospel and this gospel is coming to life in your heart for the first time or for the 
17th, 15th, you know, 16th time, whatever, whatever. And it's like, you know, you have this, this ability, this, this longing to want to know him more. And if you want to come back into the fold, if that's you, I want you to raise your hand nice and high for me. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Who else? Anybody else? Thank you. All right, all right. Hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I, I want to pray for you. If you had your hands up after this, I want you if, you, if you have to go pick up your kids and go pick up your kids and come back, but I want to pray, actually pray for you on this side. I want to pray for you personally on this side. Come see me. Um, otherwise, I want to pray and conclude. And if the Lord's still doing ministry in this moment for you, you don't have to go anywhere unless you have to pick up your kids. You could also pick up your kids and come back in, but I feel like the Lord's not done ministering to, you, to us. So Holy Spirit, we, we thank you, Father, for what, you, um, for what you're doing in this place. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We pray that we can continue to step into this, this, this challenge, this invite, this, this thing you've called us to, to advance your agenda. But it can only be advanced if we just are open. We're open. We have this, this posture of a naturally supernatural life. We're going, we're going after this radical middle together. So I pray that we, we, you, you open our eyes and ears to see and hear what it is you want to do through us, through this next week, Lord God. And open up opportunities for us to pray for people right now. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Amen. God bless you guys. You can't be officially dismissed. If you want prayer, please come up to get prayer. Uh, let's have the band just go ahead and, uh, and rock one more chorus. And we'll just go ahead and allow Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. If you said yes to Jesus, come meet me down here at this side. Let's go.